I think. Here we go. All right, we are live. We are live. Good morning and welcome, everybody. This is the Sheeran Eggplant stream for the Eggplant community. Uh, Eggplant podcast, The Secret Lives of Games. Um, not officially affiliated. This is just something I'm throwing together for the community because they had asked a number of questions about uh, Sheer and the Wanderer, um, one of my favorite games. Um, we, we've been in the process of an ongoing, almost like Let's Play series, I guess. Um, so we will get right into it. We just finished the... One second. getting a really wicked echo that I didn't have right before I streamed. Of course, it would be that way. All right. That's a little bit more mo more manageable. All right. So, Eggplant the Wanderer. We just finished the Tower of the Past. We're back at the village. We're getting ready to restart. Um, our next run to go to Tower of the Present. So, we have Past, Present, and Future. Then we want to go ahead and then we want to complete so that we get the dice of fate, so that Jirokichi can change the fate of Oyu, his childhood friend, who has been stricken ill, stricken with a mysterious illness that has no cure. So if we make our way back in, of course, everything has to go back through Destiny Trail. And when we left off, we had a pretty good sword with the Dota Nuki plus 13. Um, we had an okay -ish shield at one point during the end of the run, and then things, um, things didn't end up well with some of the monster types that we had. So we, ha we have a pretty stacked inventory. Um, I really actually should have went and deposited a lot of this at the warehouse. Um, but we're going to roll with it. Um, we're doing it live. It'll be fine. So I think from the last stream that we did, um, I already covered a lot of the basics. So I will... Swift Grass to double my uh, actions per turn. Always useful. But we might... We might speed through some of these. Earth Scroll gives us uh, an upgrade for the shield, so we want to go ahead and do that. We got monies, peach. Um, let's see. Yeah, I really should have cleared out the inventory. Though, what I can go ahead and do, um, let's go ahead and eat some of these. So there's not a lot of benefit of doing it. This is actually more for inventory clearing than anything else. Um, but early on, when you only have 15 HP, every little bit counts, so. Now I can pick up that peach. Pick up some points. So we do have, I'm pretty sure, in the preservation pot, we have our revival grass and we have an undo grass. Um, let's actually go ahead and go in here. Let's remove the strength bracelet. Um, that's just something that adds strength. Strength doesn't have a m large effect. Um, I mean, we go from 8 to 11. It, it, it's going to impact damage. So if I unequip it. Okay, the, the attack power doesn't reflect here, but the strength is usually more impactful on what you can dig up in the environment. There will be these little spots in the map where you'll see a sparkling... Um, they'll, they'll sparkle like there's treasure underneath to be uh, dug up. But you have to have a certain amount of strength to do that. Alright, so... 23 damage. Pretty good. Try to cut our way through Destiny's Trail as much as possible. So just like all the other streams, I'm probably going to be around 45 minutes... Uh, easy for me to say. 45 minutes to an hour. Um, 
Uh, doing a little morning run before we get to work. So maybe for the sake of science, let me take off that strength bracelet and see. We were doing about 23 damage. I can try to illustrate the difference. Yeah, see, there's no difference. It really has to do more with the strength that you have um, in digging up. Or it could be a damage cap, too. Um, one of the things that we will do with this item, though, plain targe, we'll go ahead and pick up. Um, we can leave the katana, because that's an unmodified katana. It doesn't have any beneficial status effects. Alright, let's take a look at that plain Tarj that we just picked up. Now normally for something like this, the plain Tarj adds a base strength on, on um, defensive capabilities is, is not that great. You can see it's 9 versus 2. The Coffer Shield only has plus 2 modifier. Um, but sometimes in this case, uh, you identify it so that you can free up the inventory slot. Or at least that's what I would like to do. Because I'd like to go ahead and take this peach. Um, um. Now, Scythe is an interesting weapon. It will have additional damage against grass-type enemies. Um, let's go ahead and swap that with the antidote for grass. Or we'll eat another herb. Try and boost up our HP a little bit. I think we're well enough set in our inventory that we don't necessarily need to explore through Destiny Trail. If we find things like that sword, we can pick them up. But for the moment, I, I think we're safe enough that we can just simply beeline for the exit whenever we find it. Labyrinth called life. Sure. I think I'll find what you're looking for. We'll have to see. Alright. Let's see. Rocks. Um, rocks are a useful projectile weapon. We'll go ahead and do that. Um, let's equip the strength bracelet. And let's... What do we want to swap out for rocks? Warp grass. That's fine. Ouch. Okay, so Shadowbind status keeps us from moving around, um, which early on at this point isn't isn't that bad. That's something that's more valuable to inflict against uh, enemies, especially later in a dungeon when you don't want to deal with them. So we have a hide pot. Hide pot can be used to throw at an enemy um, to, to seal them up or to hide yourself. Um, sometimes useful at night if you run out of abilities. I think I mentioned before. Let's go ahead and um, we'll swap the swap staff. Seems appropriate to me. Oh no, it's this guy. Oh, hey, it's you. I didn't think I'd bump into you here. <laughs> it pays off. This is another one of those cross-run stories that you pick up. Um, kind of, you, you keep encountering this guy. He keeps asking for money. He does eventually... He does eventually pay it back um, in, in different ways. Hopefully we'll see those on stream at some point. Now I can actually survive. I feel the mojo. Oh boy. Alright. Um, so, I got distracted earlier. Let's go ahead and set these. So if I set them, that means that I can... Um, we have a shortcut key of the L button to throw them. So as a projectile weapon, Ronk is, is, is okay. One of the really good things about it is that you can use it to throw um, a rock over a wall. It has that arc to it. 
Um, in Destiny's Trail and more open settings, it's, it, it's not as useful. But when we get into the, the the Tower of Fortune, you know, the Tower of Past, Present, and Future, Tower of Miracles, Tower of Fortune Later, um, indoor settings where you have walls to deal with, um, being able to cheat some damage from around a corner or behind a smaller wall uh, can be really useful. Can be really useful. Go ahead and use this. Perception grass helps us see traps. Grass kid looking. I'm sorry, pen kid. There's the grass kid. See, he has grass. And what grass did he have? A swift grass. Let's go ahead and use that. So, also, before I lose track of it, so the peaches in your inventory will. Um, they will. I, I, is deteriorate the right way, they will regress or, or they'll progress through a, a certain status. Um, they'll go from hard peach, regular peach, juicy peach, and then rotten peach. So y they, they each have their own status effects. Rotten peach obviously isn't, isn't that great, but the uh, juicy peach we'll go ahead and eat because it gives us enduring status. Enduring status will allow us to soak one hit that would otherwise be uh, fatal. So we definitely want to go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and read the navigation uh, scroll, see if I'm on the right track. Um, okay, exit. If we look at the map right there, exit's at the bottom. Okay, go ahead and fast forward through this. Free herb, free HP. Oh, it was... I should have waited to... I didn't realize I was a 37 of 38, so that that grass healed me all of 1 HP. It was sloppy. Oh, well. Pro, pro streamer moment there. So the sweet nuts here... Here, let's see if we can... Let's throw a rock. Eight. We go to 16. We go 32. Yeah. Okay, so 32... Yeah, 32 times the normal experience. I'll take that. Gets me a little ahead of the curve. Just eat that power up grass. Like right now, with the inventory as stacked as we. Oh, max HP increased by two. I'm always a little nervous with grass kids throwing grass at you. I've been one shot by um, a grass kid throwing a dragon grass. Like even early on in the game, um, dragon grass is a one use item that you can. Um, you can consume to, to blow fire and do a lot of damage to an enemy in front of you. Um, so it's not fun when a grass kid will throw that at you and do like 40 damage out of nowhere. Um, especially early on, like if you aren't leveled up, if you aren't lucky to get a 32 times sweet nut multiplier like we had, um, that, that'll totally take you out. So you have to be very careful with grass kids. Um, you want to try to close on them. I th my the, t the tendencies that I've seen, what I've observed, is that they will throw the grass as a ranged attack if they they see you ahead. So if you can try to close the distance before they can do that, um, it can be pretty helpful. Um, I was rambling. What was I doing? Oh, that was a sail scroll. Um, we can sell that tin shield. Tin shield's not going to be very useful to us right now. Alright, 259 Gitan. We'll sort. And that takes care of the oh, Gitan. Strip trap is uh, incredibly annoying. Just have to re equip everything. Thankfully, since we're not facing any enemies at the moment, we're not left vulnerable by that. It just ends up being tedious. Not one of my favorite traps in the game. 
Beast Fang. That could be useful. Um, ordinary Pot. So we can put three items in that Ordinary Pot, but we can't take them back out. Um, it would really only be used to compress inventory. Um, we have a few items that are valuable, but I'm not feeling a major pinch where um, there would be a, a good benefit in doing that. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> the sweet nut was sleeping, so he couldn't eat the rock. There we go. Oh, got too greedy. That is what happens when you gamble. Just push your left one, one step too far. So that right there is that spring trap. More of a nuisance than anything else. We just rewalk the path back. All right, Jirokichi. We got to get those other dice. Now, I think I do have enough money that I can potentially hire the torque. No, no, it's 1500 Man, I'm short again. Guess it'll just be Jirokichi and me. Thrilling story. So Gyaza are somewhat annoying uh, later on. The, the early ones aren't as bad, but... Um, oh, that was good. Honed Dodonuki. Um, oh, Elite Store. Okay, so... Recommendation, la uh, recommendation letter is something that you can get from the point shop. Um, and that brings you to an Elite Store. Right now, since we don't have a lot of money, it's, it's not a big miss. Um, but it's, it's sort of fun to see it there. Um, in the meantime, I was talking about the, the Gaza-type en uh, enemies. They will absorb whatever thrown items that you uh, try to chuck at them. Um, and and it, it just minimizes it down to one or two damage. So early on in, in the levels when you're usually ahead of the curve, it, and it's easy to bop them for damage and take them out that way with a melee attack, it's not as big of a deal. Um, later on, when you're facing upgraded versions of those enemies, and um, you're looking for any amount of damage that you can, any amount of chip damage that you can have before they close for a melee attack, um, it's not great, right? Normally you have more upgraded projectiles, or maybe you would like to, to do um, a Shadow Bind talon, uh, Talisman, something, something with a status effect, and they just absorb that into a minimal amount of damage. How uncouth. We are born into this life with empty hands. Wow. Passive aggressive a little bit. Alright. Alright, hold on. I will eat something. Mid 66, the uh the Otigaros the Otigariso. Let's get Canada here, we'll take two HP. Oh. Talk to the I go. Come back. Yes, I have organized my items. You could just handed me the money. <laughs> so, all right. We'll sort. Get that inventory slot back. Nothing there. Um, a new Tycon. Shrub enemy. So we're at the point where we're not one shotting. Oh boy. Ouch. Okay, strength decreased by one. Wow. What an angry Mutaikon. Just throwing everything. Well, we can go ahead, since we've been poisoned, we can use Antidote Grass. That'll recover some of our strength. All of our strength. Useful. Got an herb. Points for there. Some gold. Now, that we're in the Tower of 
the present. Um, let's go ahead and wander around a little bit. Um, also because... Oh, hello. Three enemies. Let's go ahead and use the vacuum slash scroll. Deals a little bit of magic damage to everybody in the room. Um, more useful early on than late. Um, obviously, when you're later in a dungeon or later in a run, the enemies will outscale that because it's it's only going to be about 40 damage. But right now, in a situation like this, where I, I was surrounded um, by uh, two particularly nasty enemies, I'll I'll take it. Oh, and then it'll get it replaced. Thank you, thank you, stream gods. I appreciate that. Um, fever pot. Okay, so that that little uh, the the sparkling section of the dirt that that is what we were able to dig up with the shrink uh, bracelet fever pot is uh, is an interesting one so if it, it, it allows you it, it's a duplication mechanism um, but you can only fill it with the same item so if if you can find three of the same item, and, and put it in there, then you, you can duplicate it to six. So, like, grass, scrolls, those are usually decent things for this. If you put the wrong item in, it explodes. Because Sharon the Wanderer has a funny sense of humor. So, oh, there's that NPC. Fighting with the D-pad a little bit here. I'm going to try the analog stick on the Pro Controller. Still haven't... Oh, yeah, the exit was right here. Alright, second floor brings us to... Ah, uh, Curse Girl and a Mixer. Is there anything interesting that I can mix? Not from what I'm seeing in inventory. I mean, I guess I could go ahead and throw the unidentified weapons and see if we end up with um, just consolidating modifiers. We'll start the Beast Fang. Like that. And then the Scythe. And then the Ten Blade. Beast Fang plus four. Okay, so that that's pretty good for modifier. Um, oh, of of course the I, I I forget the mixers aren't like sweet nuts where you can just keep funneling uh, items into them. Um, so that first mixer type enemy that we have can only mix two items, and and it's later uh, later in the run as you face leveled up versions of the enemies. Um, that's uh, later versions of mixers can support more items. So that's why that second sword that I threw, um, the tin blade, ended up like bouncing off his head because um, he had already mixed. Um, he'd already reached his item cap. He had already mixed the two items that he could. So, but I'll take that beast fang plus four. Um, the if we look, the Dodonuki has a base of 12. Well, and that's a home Dodonuki, too. Yeah, it's... Maybe the Dodonuki is okay. We can, we can find a synthesis pot and merge that back in. Uh, let's see. So, Curse Girl... Um, as the name suggests, can curse your items. Um, sometimes it's better to just leave well enough alone, but early on, Curse Girl usually doesn't pose too much of a threat. We're still one-shotting enemies at this point. We're doing pretty well on staying ahead of the curve. For damage output. 
Beast Shield to pair with the Beast Fang later. Um, you do to get the benefit when you pair um, certain uh, weapon and shield combinations of uh, equipping two bracelets. So one of the things that we will do with this strength bracelet, as I think I was about to say before I got distracted by something shiny, is um, we'll, we'll take it back to town and we'll put it in the raccoon pot. Um, bracelets, I, I think I mentioned on another stream, bracelets are great to throw in the raccoon pot um, just to accumulate all sorts of weird status effects. Um, and sometimes you can get some really supercharged ones. You know, that strength bracelet could end up as a strength bracelet that lets you walk on water and, you know, it could make you immune to poison, immune to sleep. Um, it could also make it so that every action that you take, you explode, which is obviously not a winner either. Um, it's all, all a part of the gamble of the raccoon pot. Another curse girl. Okay. So at this point, we're not really seeing anything um, totally out of step. I think it's been a pretty smooth progression to this point. We got poison again. Um, pretty smooth progression to the Tower of Present. And, and I mean, this is this is a pretty smooth on-ramp for Sharon. Um, and some of the older games in the series... Um, after you play about a dozen levels in, you'll start to see some really wild enemy types that don't really show up here until much later or even in the post game. Like field knaves. All sorts of fun enemies. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's make like a tree and get out of here. Side step into that attack to get initiative. Another Beast Fang, which I will be happy to take. Um, I don't know... Do I really want to keep that Fever Pot? Let's go ahead and... We'll just do the Herb. That's what we'll do to keep the inventory. Clear. Oh. Oh, shoot. Come on. Come here. So those guys can go through walls. They're very annoying. Okay, now I can talk to the NPC. The super plating craftsman. Um, yeah, we're happy to plate that because that is... How, how many modifiers did we lose the last stream on that shield right before we ended? Um, we're going to go with more than more than I wanted to. Uh, I'm going to say two, maybe even three. We did not have... Oop. We did not have a good run there. Alright. Starting to get into enemies that can do a little more damage. Um... Unidentified Strength Bracelet. Um, we can go ahead and throw that in the Preservation Pot. So we'll go to Insert. Strength Bracelet. I mean, that's where we got the other one out of. Let's go ahead and get out of here. Theme change. More serious music. So we'll further into the tower. Oop. So these things, Metalhead will um, will charge up its strength, and it can attack with um, a little bit of distance. So if it's within one or two spaces of you, uh, it it can rear back and, and get you pretty well. So backing up, like we just did there, effectively short circuits the attack. The normal attacks aren't that bad. Effectively heal up as we go. Polygon's been a more annoying just in terms of 
just tiny, tiny negative status effects or tiny negative effects like reducing your HP by two or reducing your fullness gauge. Oh, the cheer ham. All right, so this right here is a cheer ham, and what it'll do is that... I don't remember if it's for all monsters in the room or if it's just a monster that's adjacent to the cheer ham. Um, it's a little cheerleader for the monsters, and, and it gives all of the monsters enduring status with its song, so it allows them to take a, a shot that would otherwise kill them. Yeah, it's probably adjacent. Oh, man. Oh, there you go. So, a couple of different things happening here. This is pretty good. Um, so, Cheerham's cheering allowed Swordsman to cling to life. And then the Swordsman parried. So, this is one of the special attacks of this enemy type. Um, it can effectively parry your shield to the ground as an unequip. So, I'm going to have to pick that back up. Right now, I'm operating without a shield. Um, and where did it go back to? You have to go... There we go. Cough shield picked up. Let's quit that. Ooh, Jirokichi. Did he take out the swordsman? Yes, he did. Jirokichi, my boy. Good work. Oh, good work. Ow. Okay, so now we're starting to starting to get on a point on the curve where the the defense is a bigger issue like one or two attacks isn't bad to in terms of taking out an enemy but we need to be able to stay in the pocket and take a hit um, we don't want to have things doing us 10 damage a pop if we can help it Lovely. Old Mallet. Destroys traps and items on the ground, but the Mallet may break instead. <laughs> Just a random non order like in the, the item description, because that's something that Churn the Wanderer does. It's totally okay with that. Um... Oh, and I just now saw that rotten peach because I wasn't paying attention. Here, we can throw that. Not cool. Just been paying closer attention to my inventory. So we'll throw that because we don't want that anymore. The old mallet we can take just for the modifier, but we also may want... Um, because if we were to merge it with another item... Um, I think there's a rune that has that trap breaking or item breaking status, um, which also has the um, the breakability aspect to it. So later on when we get to the Hermit's Village, um, which is something that'll come up after we complete all three towers, we'll have an ability to see the blacksmith there that can uh, remove runes, uh, potentially negative runes, and I think that's um, something that we'll want to look into. Um, we're going to eat an onigiri because we're actually closer on fullness than I realized. Um, we're going to pick up that re revival grass. Jirokichi holding the fort. Good job, Jirokichi. That's right. Extra re uh, re revival grass doesn't hurt. Topaz bracelet, so a totally unidentified bracelet type. Um, we'll want to go ahead and grab that. We can swap out... Um, here, we'll, we'll heal up, or attempt to heal up. Alright, now I can go ahead and use this life grass. Get 4 HP. Pick up the bracelet. There's that attack. So double damage. You saw there it was normally doing 11 damage to us earlier in the run. So you, you get the charge up and you get a double damage as a result. Six floors in. Uh, 
mage staff can be somewhat useful. So it, it basically gives you a, a ranged attack that can do a number of different status effects. So um, confused or asleep, um, it's just kind of a grab bag. Uh, in terms of what we have, um, guess I can swap it out for a peach. Um, we're not going to get to day night cycle until after the the three towers, the three um, introductory towers of past, present, and future. So there's not as much of a need to carry the peach for now. Um, I could have let it go to... Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to pick it back up. I'm going to change my mind. Um, we can get enduring status with that. We'll take the seal talisman out because those aren't as useful. It's very situational. Oh. Okay, played it, so nothing happens. Both item and weapon were plated. So that's useful. But those are our friends that ruined our items from earlier. Um, didn't really appreciate that. Uh, strength grass, we'll go ahead and eat. Get our one strength back. Um, we already have one peach, we're fine. Big room. We got Cheerham over there. Um, NPC, we have a, um, I think that's an acrid nut. And then our Kappa friend. Actually, yeah, I do have enough range to go ahead and throw rocks and try to double up on the acrid nut. Also keeps it in place so that I can do that to the Kappa. Sixteen. Okay. Let's go ahead and cash it in. There we go. Bringing Jirokichi up in level. Perception grass. We'll go ahead and do. And we'll do the juicy peach too for that enduring status. Let's do this for a little bit. Open up an inventory slot to pick that up. Uh, let's go talk to that NPC. I think that's the calligraphy. Yeah, so this is the the old woman that w can give you something new for a blank scroll. You're no fun, I know. I know. Need to remember, I uh, already, like, two different items from the point shop. The recommendation letter and a blank scroll. If I remembered to... Uh, go by the point shop before just jumping into the dungeon we might have been able to see some different things in play um, we'll pick up the gold get out of here we got a few minutes left tower of the presence similar to what we saw before How you view me is unimportant. Do not worry about that. So who needs the die? Jirokichi and Oyu in happier times. And then the sickness. Need this to change your fate. <clears throat> All right, we have done it. We've cleared the tower of the present. Not too bad. Not too bad. Only one die left. Let's get ready. Um, before we get ready, let's see what we have here. So old mallet and rusty pickaxe and item detector. So item detector will show you all the items that are on the floor. 
Um, not, it's sort of useful. Sometimes it can help you um, find a, a, a hidden shop location. The more useful detector item is a monster detector. Monster detector will give you uh, visibility to all the monsters on the level, even at nighttime if you don't have a torch. Um, you can use that to plan all sorts of movements in, in a level. Much more useful than that. Um, we're going to go ahead and sell the mallet and the pickaxe since they didn't have any modifiers. Um, so mallet, pickaxe. Um, the hide pot, kind of give or take... I mean, for the early on right now, I wouldn't. I wouldn't normally bring it on a run with me. Um, it's it's one of those items that's useful to find um, along the way, but not necessarily useful to pack. We'll take care of the gold and B shield too. Um, that's the the R button to select multiples. Um, Mage staff is the same sort of way. Like it's not something that you want to clog up with an inventory slot right off the bat, but it can be useful if you find it if you find it on route. Get some money back. Uh, I do. Knockback staff is kind of right on the edge too. Um, I'll, it's good to keep though as a get a jail free card against a single one on one encounter. If you need to push one back and get some space it can be good to keep around just for that. Fever pot, I'll deposit. We can deposit that in the do storage. Um, so let's do fever pot, and then for right now, we will do these two items because we want to keep them around for modifiers to synthesize later. So we're down to almost one page of inventory, which is good. Um, oh, let me grab that other. So get. And then I actually want to insert that other undo grass. Protected by the pot from any status effects that would come up. Um, heal grass we can go ahead and get rid of too, or we can just take it, it's not really a big deal. Let's go ahead and go downstairs to the basement and start working this raccoon pot. Um, that item detector or the strength bracelet, either one of those are good candidates here. So we're going to set an item inside it. Let's do the item detector. The secret pot. And then we will do... Where's that strength bracelet? Yep. So we'll put those in, and then if we, uh, you know, we're, we've kind of gotten into a rhythm of doing this stream every Friday, so that's seven days from now. That's seven days of modifiers that we can pile up on the secret pot, um, see what the raccoon pot can gift us. Um, so that'll be a treat for the next stream. So um, in the meantime, I think this is actually probably a good place to, to tie everything up. Um, we can go by the points shop to see... Um, what items we have available to us there. Always a good habit to do that after every run. Let's see. Um, preservation pot of five is good. That's a, that's a good cash in right now. Go ahead and start getting these so we can get our inventory lined up a little bit more. So much of this game is is optimizing inventory management. We'll go Revival Grass, Vacuum Scroll. Can go ahead and do the Heal Grass too, I guess. Um, and then the Shadow Mind Talons, or Talisman. I don't know why I keep saying Talons. So we'll put that in there. Um, we can do a few more items too. So, eventually we'll get rid of this preservation pot three, just because it's not going to be use as useful. Because um, we we can very easily get a preservation pot five that you just saw. Um, but for now, um, we can keep it around. It's a really big deal. So now we have we're down to one page of inventory. We have a lot more space to pick up things as we go. 
Um, I think next time that we're looking at the stream, we will be looking at Tower of the Future. Um, that seems to be a pretty good rhythm for us so far. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead, just since we know that we're headed there, and we have uh, at least a couple minutes, let's see if we can run through Destiny Trail real quick. This is kind of the slower part of the stream, anyway. Um, Earth Scroll that we want to read. Um, now the Earth Scroll, so, you know what? Let's, let's insert the Earth Scroll. Right now, it, we're low leverage here. There's not really much going on defensively in uh, Destiny's Trail that's that's going to tax that shield. So let's go ahead and grab that. We have that Fever Pot back at the warehouse, so we can we can see if we get three of those Earth Scrolls, so that we can double them up, and then get six modifiers as a result. Um, mentioned before on another one of the previous streams, I'm not a fan of confusion as an offensive mechanic. Um, just not predictable. Doesn't really give you. Just opens up a possibility space that's much less predictable. Much harder to game plan around because you have no idea how the enemies are going to move. So, kind of a trap. Trap status. Just like you have trap cards on a magic draft that um, that seem like they're good build arounds or seem like they're good value propositions, but they really aren't. Um, sometimes you have items in a game like this that that seem like they can be useful, um, but they're they're really highly situational, so situational that it's not even worth keeping them around. Um, electric staff is just uh, straight away you can use it to shoot electricity um, electrocution does chain um, so you want to make sure that you don't have an NPC nearby that's going to get zapped if you zap another nearby enemy with it fun little interaction there the, the column got hit and then rolled back um, and took care of the other one Sure, in the Wanderer Bowling Edition. There we go. Water Cutter, good for water enemies. Keep that for sure. I got a big room here. Lots of points. Fate Scroll for a weapon upgrade. Um, that one, you know, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll keep all of the scrolls for now. Let's keep them all for now. Did I, oh, I didn't check that other. It's like, did I walk by the, in, the exit? And the answer is no, I just didn't, just didn't pay attention. Didn't explore fully. Iron Targe. All right, we're getting close here. Did I forget to pick up Jirokichi? No, Jirokichi is waiting at the tower. I got nervous that I abandoned him in town. Let's see what we get here. There we go. You can work that explosion to your benefit. It's not just a nasty status, a nasty um, negative effect that you have to deal with. Enemies play by the same rules as you do. That's part of what makes it such an interesting game. So hopefully the levels have been a little bit better. Um, my microphone is still fussy. I have a new headset coming in, but I did get a noise gate 
application to try and cut down on the fuzz, at least um, whenever I'm not talking. So, ooh, let's let's upgrade that shield. That's where we're behind the curve on right now. Do your best. Yeah, plus three modifier. I will take it. Thank you, sir. Um, oil scroll, not useful. Again, highly situational. Staff. I already got one. Uh, preservation pot four. We can go ahead and do though. We'll pick that up. Let's insert. Let's get that fate scroll in there. Let's get the uh, Tigriso. Let's, um, I don't know about the staff. Um, perception grass and the Taraj. Sure. Could have put the water cutter in there instead of the grass, but eh. It's all going to the same place. There we go. Lockbox shield. Does that give it any other. Yeah, it's just the, the can't steal. So <laughs> Gramps was just a coin purse. He really wanted to get buried in one day. <laughs> I love sharing the wander. I love all its random, bizarre stories tucked into item descriptions. So this, I think, is the perfect place to leave things off. We find Jirokichi. We actually have enough money to hire our friend, our tour guide. I'll do that momentarily. Come here. Strange panda girl. We'll definitely hire you. Since NPCs retain experience across runs, um, just like Jirokichi does, it's it's useful to make sure that you max out your ally count. You always want an ally gaining experience on any given run if you can, if you can bring them along. Eggplant and Kappa. All right. So we are set. The Tower of the Future is where we'll be headed next, but that will be another stream for another time. Meanwhile, for the folks that have been jumping in and out of uh, the I, in and out of the stream, um, thanks for watching. Um, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it, and have a great weekend, and happy wandering. Thanks, everybody.